everyone. I'm Esther Kovac, co-founder of Drone Talks. And today at the Commercial UAV Show, I am here with David Rovira, who is working for Rigitech as a chief business officer. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thanks for accepting. You know, like three years ago when I started Drone Talks, actually Rigitech was one of the first company I interviewed. And we were so material regarding, uh, you know, our show compared to now. It's like, you know, we are in the moon. So thanks for coming over again after three years and representing Rigitech. And we're excited because a lot happened with Drone Talks, but a lot happened with Rigitech in the last exactly. three years as well, right? So what happened with Rigitech during the last three years from our last interview with Adam? Yes, um, you know, the, uh, the drone world moves fast. Uh, so we've been uh, busy in the three years. We basically developed a whole new platform, which is the Iger that is now on the market. We concentrated a lot in uh, European regulations. Uh, so we tried to navigate European regulations so we're able to do BV loss. You know, we're in a uh, drone delivery world. Uh, it is all BV loss. And uh, currently, it's always uh, a bit difficult to navigate. Um, so we're trying to adapt our solution to be able to do long range BV loss deliveries in Europe. And now we're seeing that the fact that we're able to fly BV loss in Europe is also opening all the markets. Yeah. So which countries are you flying currently BV loss in Europe? I saw in the news you get a lot of booths. Uh, yeah. So which are the countries you are flying currently? So our drones are flying right now BV loss in Denmark, France, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Switzerland, Uruguay, and uh, very soon in the US. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. So when are you going to fly in the uh, US? So me very soon it's like half a year or a few months? And very soon is probably in less than a month. Amazing. Well yeah. done. So that's a project with Sprite or it's another project? It's another project. Oh, wow. Can we, can we know something about it? It's still a secret. Yeah, in this not day. yet. It will be, okay. it will be un unveiled uh, very soon. Um, but also with, uh, with Sprite, we have plans as well to um, to grow, uh, we're now starting in uh, in Europe with them, and possibly opening up in uh, in the US. In the US, uh, so. yeah, because you know, Rigitech drones are in the Sprite pavilion. This is why we are mentioning Sprite, you know. So if anyone is interested, just you know, go over to the Sprite pavilion, check the design, check what Rigitech does. So why your drone? What do you think? Why Sprite as an operator cherry picked your solution compared to any other? You know, without pointing on one, just generally, why your drone? is better or is the one so, so it's a good question there's different reasons i think the first one is that we control both hardware and software we develop both of them in parallel which for regulations makes a lot of sense we're not liable to anyone we don't have to request data to anyone we have all the data and we manufacture according to um to our own uh, principles and then we have very fast-paced um, flexibility you know, if something comes in in the new regulations, we can adapt very quickly hardware and software uh, without depending on somebody else. That's one of the main factors. And the other one is that we put a lot of attention into safety. I think uh, that's, that was our first um, requirement. We build all the redundancies on the drone. We build the parachute, uh, the fail-safe independent system that is on there that allows you to fly under current regulations in the ASA, uh, ASA regulations. And, uh, and that's why I think the idea is that they wanted to enter the European market. Yeah. And we were one of the, um, the service providers that had experience and that were already flying there. Amazing. So you, talking about the European market, you are based in Lausanne in Switzerland. You know, we are both Swiss companies, so it's very exciting. And um, you still do all the production in Lausanne. And, uh, and your brain is in Lausanne still, right? Like a Swiss product. Do you think it affected uh, on the client's uh, buying uh, mood? You are a Swiss product, reliable, you know, representing quality. Is it a benefit for you as a company? Or do you think it doesn't matter in a European uh, landscape? It definitely matters. Yes. I think it's, it's a value added from Switzerland. Um, it gives you, you know, it's not only the fact that uh, people perceive you as a, as a company that, uh, that has a good quality, it's also that um, you get a lot of support in Switzerland to give that quality. Exactly. Um, you have, uh, you know, it's well known for precision, but you, you have a lot of um, good universities on robotics that provides you good people that are coming to work with you. 
and also the government's backing startups and technology startups quite a lot, uh, pushing them to, to move forward, to cross boundaries, and to actually carry that flag of uh, Swiss product um, technology and quality. Yeah. Exactly. And Lausanne is beautiful. Now you uh, like being there. It's yes. I'm becoming the I'm becoming Swiss now. I like it so much. You're becoming I'm, Swiss. I'm becoming you like Swiss. it so much. You know, you you be careful, you know, because when you're gonna be Swiss, you need to be punctual, exactly, you know, like exactly. you, you know, you cannot be late. I, I will be a terrible Swiss, to be honest. I'm always <laughs> late from everywhere, you know, like so I'm not even sure they're gonna give me the passport <laughs> one day based on my behaviors, you know, like uh, so how long you are living in Lausanne? Like? So in Switzerland all together twelve years and in oh, wow. Lausanne nine years. Amazing. So how big is the office uh, of Rigitech in Lausanne? We're now, so the total office is uh, 25 uh, full staff members. And I think in, in Lausanne, we have 20 of them. Amazing. And it's easy to hire there or? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, everyone, I would say everyone from Europe criticizes the salaries in, uh, in Switzerland. Yeah. But essentially, it is much better for us to get people in Switzerland, uh, mainly because you know, the uh, taxes for the employee are lower. Yes. Um, you have much more flexibility with them. And uh, and it's easier. It's essentially easier. And also that you have a pool of people from the drone industry uh, that come from either ETH or EPFL, yeah. which essentially is are the ones that uh, that are going to drive the company forward. So, And I think it's a very important point because in Switzerland, door industry is not a new thing. It's already developing now a lot of years. So you can hire people who are not new to the drone industry, but they have some experience already. So that's what we also experience. So my last question is revenue generation. You know, Rigitech grew from nowhere to be a 25 people company and you selling, actually you are selling your drones. So you are the ones who really have uh, income from your product. So you're not only living on investment money like a lot of the companies based on my experience. So for first, congratulations for that. For second, what's the secret? And how did you grow during the last couple of years, you know? Um, what do you see is the industry is it the right um it, is it the right time now to sell products or is it still pre-phase um is it really growing or is it now like stopped currently so how do you see this uh, business you are a chief business officer yeah. so you know you you are the right person to talk about this oh ah, it's an interesting question i think you know we started without knowing very well what to do uh, I think everyone was lost uh, five years ago. We started five years ago. Um, and then we, we decided that the best way to, um, to get our drones flying was to do both service. So we prove that the, the drone is capable of doing the service. We learn from it on how the drone will need to look and what are the features that will need to be developed on that drone for then moving into selling that drone. Uh, there were not a lot of uh, drone operators out there. You know, there were I would say like two or three uh, that had the ambition to do drone delivery, which is exactly. a whole different world from mapping and, uh, and surveying. And um, so we decided to start uh, looking for customers, which there is demand. And, and the, good, the good vibes that we got from the market was like, okay, healthcare, we got a lot of demand. We signed deals with laboratories to do the operations. Although we knew that as a company, at some point, we wanted to only be focusing on production and manufacturing of, uh, of yeah. the aircraft, but it was a good starting point for us to prove the market. Exactly. And, um, and I think that actually gave us certain level or certain uh, position ahead from, uh, from the competition because we were already flying in Europe and we had, we had to go through regulations, we had to go through um, problems, uh, set up uh, how many people you need, how much does it cost, all these questions. Um, that our customers are now facing, we've lived with. And I think that's an advantage. Um, and that actually is what makes the product better. Now, yeah. uh, you know, even though we say we're at the beginning of the market, just beginning, it's early stage. Um, but this year, I would say we're, you know, essentially we are hitting product market fit for some, uh, some customers. So the drone is actually performing what it needs to be uh, done. So we're seeing that increase of demand and actually it's, uh, it's good news, but we all know that it's still very early uh, in the market. Um, there's still a lot of questions to be answered by yeah. regulators, to be answered by, um, by uh, the civil society as well. And it has a lot of saying into uh, drone delivery. All these questions will, you know, 
start to take shape and we hope for that uh, soon it will be uh, a normal thing to have drone delivery. 100%, I cannot agree more. Thank you so much for the interview and I think it was very insightful. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you.